Will it actually work when the grid's gone? Most solar systems shut down during blackouts. But this system powers our home off the grid every single day like clockwork, and that's the kind of reliability that you're after. The sun charges our batteries down here, and then the inverter manages everything automatically. And when the clouds hang around for days, the generator steps in quietly. Every other part plays a role, and together they make one seamless system. So let's start with the brains of it all, the inverter. Back in the old days, you had to wire together a bunch of boxes to make a system work. One for the inverter, one for the charge controller, another for breakers and disconnects. It worked, but it was complicated and expensive, and it took up half a wall. I mean, here's a picture of an old system that we installed where you can see all these different components and wires and conduit and all this all over the place. Thankfully, today, we've got all-in-one inverters that handle everything in one clean, UL-listed unit. That's simpler to install, it's easier to permit, and when, by the way, when I say simpler to install, that not only helps you out if you're doing the installation, but even if you're hiring somebody else to do it, it should cost less because it's going to be quicker and easier to install. And it really is built for the way that people actually live today. So the one that I personally use that I highly recommend is the Midnight Power All-in-One. It's a 10 kilowatt inverter that you can expand later if you wanted to by adding more units in parallel where you could end up with 20 or 30 or even more kilowatts if you happen to need it. And when you do that, you're adding redundancy, which I love redundancy. If anything ever happens to one inverter, you still have the others as backups, you're still in business. So that's pretty cool. It's a smart, powerful system, and it's built from the ground up for off-grid living. And that last part really matters because even if you're only using this as a backup, when the grid goes down, you're off the grid, like it or not. Now here's where this unit really shines. When a big motor like your well pump kicks on, it needs a big jolt of power for a second or two. The Midnight All-in-One can surge to 200% of its rating. So that 10 kilowatt inverter can deliver 20 kilowatts for that instant without breaking a sweat. And that's the difference between a pump that starts and a system that crashes from overload. It also handles imbalanced loads like a champ. If one leg of your electrical panel pulls heavier than the other, because remember you've got the two legs alternating in here, if you happen to have a bunch of loads on one leg that pulled really hard at the same time without anything pulling on the other leg, uh, with a lot of inverters, lesser ones, uh, they'll shut down. But this one keeps running and it's got brains. In fact, let me show you this. This is really cool especially for when you're running off-grid. These are smart breakers here where you can hook up like a electric water heater or something that was non-essential and it's a big load and you're worried that it would pull your batteries down too far. You can hook it up to this thing and say, okay, I want you to run that load as long as the batteries are above 50% or whatever. And if the batteries ever get below that point that you set, then it will automatically turn that load off, which is super, super cool. Then, you know, it'll turn back on when the batteries recover and all of that. This keeps your essentials running longer during extended outages. This thing is also very flexible with solar. The Midnight All-in-One can handle up to 15 kilowatts of solar input. Or, get this, if you already have a grid-tied array, it can AC couple with that grid-tied array for up to 10 kilowatts of existing solar. So whether you're starting from scratch now or upgrading what you've already got, this inverter can fit beautifully into that picture. Now, all that power has to be stored somewhere, dependable. So let's talk about the batteries that make this whole thing work. Just think of your batteries as a fuel tank. They store energy from your solar panels and keep things running when the sun isn't out. I highly recommend lithium iron phosphate batteries unless you're putting them somewhere that stays below freezing for most of the winter. The cost on these things has come way, way down and they really are now the most cost-effective option. I was just figuring it up the other day comparing it to some of the most cost-effective batteries years ago. And even with the prices 10 or 15 years ago, the cost of these is like a fair bit lower. In addition to that, they're completely maintenance-free. They last at least 15 to 20 years. They're super safe and you can discharge them almost all the way down without any bad effects. And because they charge faster, you can 
pump more power into them more quickly uh, because of that, if you ever need to top them off with a generator, you're going to burn less fuel and save time. They do have a couple of needs. For one, they can't charge safely below 32 degrees. They do have a uh, safety built in that will prevent them from being damaged, but you just won't be able to charge them when they get that cold. So you're going to want to keep them somewhere warm or pick a model with a built in heater. And then number two, if you're in a hot climate, try to keep them below 100 degrees or else you're going to reduce their lifespan. Every lithium battery has a BMS, which is a battery management system that monitors and protects the cells, kind of like a, a built-in safety. And if you're going with the Midnight Power all-in-one inverter, then the perfect match with that is Midnight's Power Flow batteries, which is what's down here. They're UL9540 listed as an energy storage system, commonly called an ESS, when you use them with Midnight's all-in-one inverter. What that means is you've got a certified system that's fully compatible, that makes it easier to pass inspections with electrical inspectors and things like that, and it communicates seamlessly. Also, when you go with the same brand for the whole system, you skip the blame game when something goes wrong. You know what I'm talking about. Each company saying, oh, it's the other guy's fault. We've all dealt with that. Well, you can eliminate that when everything is with the same company. They come in two main versions. There's the PowerFlow 5, which is what these are, and the PowerFlow 16. PowerFlow 5 is a compact rack-mounted battery that stores about 5 kilowatt hours each, and the expected lifespan is at least 15 years and 6,000 cycles. Now, a cycle is when you start out with a fully charged battery, discharge it down to, in this case, say 20% or so, and then back up. So you've gone all the way down and back up. That's one cycle. 6,000 of those, friends, is the rated lifespan of these things. And really, that's not even the rated lifespan. They say 6,000 cycles, and it'll still hold 80% of its rated power after that. So pretty impressive. They're affordable, they're efficient, and you can stack them six high up to a total of 16 in one complete battery bank to build the capacity that you need. What's really cool is you can even mount them in a server rack battery cabinet like this one, which is where these are going. They're temporarily in this setup, but they're going to end up in a battery cabinet like that. The PowerFlow 16, on the other hand, is a larger wall mount or floor mount battery that holds 16 kilowatt hours each. Basically like having three of these smaller ones in one case. It's got a built-in heater for cold climates, active cell balancing, for better long-term performance and keeping everything balanced very well. And it's rated for about 8,000 cycles. 8,000. There's like a 15-year warranty and 20-year expected lifespan. It's also outdoor rated, but I would never suggest leaving equipment like this in the elements. So how do you choose which one? Well, if you're starting small or keeping things budget friendly, then the PowerFlow 5 is a really solid pick. But if your batteries are gonna live in an unheated space or you want the longest possible lifespan and you don't mind spending a little more up front, or if you're building a really large battery bank, then the PowerFlow 16 is gonna be the better option. With the inverter and the batteries working together, the next question is, how do we feed them? So let's talk about your solar panels. Your solar panels are the quiet workers in the background. They soak up sunlight all day and they keep your system charged without you lifting a finger. Panels come in all shapes and sizes, but bigger is not always better. You'll see some out there that are rated for like 600 watts or more. And while those look impressive on paper, they're large, they're heavy, and fragile is really the biggest concern that I have with them. I prefer panels in the 400 to 450 watt range or somewhere thereabouts. They're easier to handle, they're safer to mount, and they just make life a little simpler. When it comes to brands, stick with the proven names like REC, Canadian Solar, Q-Cells, Longi, or Jinko. They're all tier one manufacturers with great warranties and strong track records. But honestly, there's so many good options, so just be aware that that's not an exhaustive list. If you live in snowy areas, you might even consider bifacial solar panels. They collect sunlight from both sides, so when there's snow on the ground, it reflects extra light up onto the backside of the panels. And that little boost adds up, especially during winter. And the extra heat also helps to melt the snow faster off of the front of the solar panels. 
If they're close in price to standard panels, then I would say they're worth the upgrade. Once your panels are chosen, you're going to need something strong to hold them in place. And this is where a lot of folks get tripped up. But before we get into that, you might be wondering, okay, this all makes sense, but you know, what's the best option for me? And that's exactly why I put together the free backup power tool. Just answer a few simple questions about your home and your goals, and it'll point you to the type of system that best fits your situation, whether that's a full off-grid setup or a reliable backup system for blackouts. And depending on your answers, you might even get the chance to have me personally review your situation and give you a one-on-one -on -one input to make sure you're on the right track. It's quick, it's free, and it'll save you a ton of time and guesswork as we go through this series. You can grab it right now at getblackoutproof.com. And we've actually decided to do a series of live sessions to answer your questions and help you apply what you've learned to your home and your specific situation. So if you go to getblackoutproof.com, you'll be able to register for these calls. All right, now that you've got a way to figure out what kind of system fits your home, let's look at how to mount these solar panels the right way. Mounts might not be exciting, but they really are essential, and sometimes they cost as much as the panels themselves, amazingly enough. It can even cost more, actually. Now, a lot of people assume that roof mounting is the easy answer, but it's not. Roof mounts can cause all kinds of headaches. They're hard to reach when you need to service them. They add extra holes to your roof, and in snow country, they can get buried or even damaged by sliding snow. Unless your roof is your only option, I really don't recommend it. For most folks, ground mounts are the way to go. They're easier to clean, safer to access, and you can tilt them through the year for better performance, such as like I can do with this one. The uh, Sinclair Engineering Skyrack is a solid, reasonably priced option, especially for large arrays of, you know, 20 panels or more. Some folks will do gargantuan systems, and so that's where it really shines. It's strong, adjustable, and built to last, but you are going to need a large, flat, cleared area to install it in. And keep this in mind, unless you're fairly close to Michigan, expect to pay around $2,500 in shipping, which to me seems a little bit crazy, but that is a flat rate for as much as they can fit on the truck. So if you're building a big system or teaming up with a few friends to split the cost on the shipping, then it could make it more cost effective. But for smaller arrays, you know, like less than 20 or so, I think that the MT Solar pole mount can really be a better deal. The uh, MT Solar system mounts on your panels high up on uh, steel poles that's set in concrete. So they stay clear of the snow and the brush. Or if you're on the side of a hill in a location where a large flat area isn't an option, then this is really going to be your best bet. It's ideal for smaller or mid-sized systems, and you can easily adjust the tilt for the seasons. You'll just need to pick up the steel poles locally. Now, even the best solar and battery setup needs a way to recharge when the sun's been hiding for a while, so come on with me. So let's talk generators. Every reliable off-grid system needs a generator for backup. It's that second line of defense for long stretches of bad weather or unexpected heavy loads. You may already have a generator, and if so, then no worries. It's very likely that you'll be able to make it work without having the perfect generator. That's actually the situation that I'm in at the moment. I've run a lot of different generators over the years, some of them good, some of them bad. I'm still using the old Honda EU7000 gas generator that I purchased years ago, but I'll be really transparent with you. Even though I really like this generator and it's been great, I have my heart set on an option that really is a better fit for this midnight power system that we have now. And what I plan to get for myself is what I'm recommending for you. For fuel, I'd go with propane. It stores indefinitely, starts easily in the cold, and you can keep a large tank topped off once or twice a year where you always have enough fuel for many hours of runtime. And the generator that I would choose for this kind of setup is the Cummins Quiet Connect series. They're fairly quiet, they're built to last, and come in sizes from around 13 to 20 kilowatts. They're enclosed in their own weatherproof shell, so all you need is a concrete pad. No extra shed, no hassle. No, it's not one of those huge commercial grade generators that are made for running around the clock forever and ever. Those are almost impossible to come by in these smaller sizes. 
and they would be really expensive also. But with a hybrid backup system like this, you really shouldn't be running a generator much at all. It's more of a just backup for once in a while kind of thing. If you're not ready for a permanent system yet, a portable EcoFlow power station can power a few small basics like fridge, freezer, internet, and a few lights. Pair it with a small Honda EU2200 generator and a bit of gas to charge it up once or twice a day, and you've got a system that could keep going for a while. It's a great short-term option while you plan your long-term system. Back in part two, we covered calculating your daily power usage, how much electricity your home actually uses in a 24-hour period. That really is your next step. If you haven't done it yet, then you need to go ahead and grab an Emporia View monitor. The link is down in the description, or you can go to thereadylife.com forward slash Emporia. And I'll show you what it is, just in case you didn't see the last video. This is it right here. It just clips right into your electrical panel and it records exactly how much power you use through the day. This data is what we're going to use in the next video to size your system correctly. So order that Emporia and get it installed and let it gather some data for at least a week or two if possible. Because next time I'm going to show you how to take those numbers and size your system so that it fits your home like a glove. Not just too big or too small, but just the right size for the way that you live. So head on over to getblackoutproof.com and check out the free backup power tool. It'll walk you through a few quick questions and show you which system fits your home the best. You know, at the end of the day, it isn't just about power systems or hardware. God gives us the wisdom to prepare. And when we do, we can face hard times with peace instead of panic. Do the best you can and trust that God's gonna take care of the rest. That's what living ready looks like.